Hey everybody, welcome to Bodhi Acumen Wellness. Today we're talking microbiome. Now I'm sitting here in one of my most favorite places, my backyard, amongst my beautiful flowers that I spend hours every weekend trimming and pruning and cleaning up. Um, it's something that I grew up doing. Uh, my family were all farmers coming from Portugal um, and all my uncles and my dad included were always had crazy flower gardens and vegetable gardens. Uh, and it's something I, I grew up doing, just having your, your hands in the soil, having your bare feet in the soil. And it was just an amazing way Way to grow up and what we're realizing finally is that contact with the natural world contact with plants and dirt um, is an important part of staying healthy um, and we're realizing now that the diversity the biodiversity uh, in the external environment has an effect on the biodiversity of our internal body and it's the biodiversity of our internal body, what they call the microbiome, which is actually a huge part of our health and why we stay healthy and why we get sick and how we age. And I see a great deal of chronic illness in my clinic. And, and you know, over the last 50 some odd years, we've become really, really great from a Western medical perspective at killing things, not so much at healing things. Uh, we've eradicated so much infectious disease, but when it comes to chronic illness, uh, we're honestly really not that great at. Our chemotherapies, our antibiotics, these are really wonderful methodologies of killing cells, but we're actually not that great at healing things. Long time ago, there was a doctor named Hippocrates, and he said, let food be your medicine, medicine should be your food. And I'm a huge proponent of that in my practice. Uh, a big part of what I do is teaching people how to eat and teaching people what the f about what the food they eat and how the food they eat affects their internal body. And the unfortunate thing is our food system right now is broken. Uh, we have a great deal of toxin and poison in our conventional food that people do not realize. Now, I'm not talking about processed fast food, the stuff everyone knows is unhealthy, but we eat anyways because it tastes good. I'm talking about the food that people think is healthy. I'm talking about the fruits and vegetables, chicken, fish, meats that people are trying to eat healthy, but don't realize that they're actually filled with toxins that are making us sick. Um, and the reality is when our digestive system is not working properly, our machine that turns food into us, turns food into blood and chi, our energy, our body, um, when it doesn't work right, um, there's not much we can do to fix it. So we have to start with that, putting the proper food in. But first it's going to start with understanding why it's broken. Now. There are certain chemicals that we spray on our fruits and vegetables, on our wheats, on our corn, on our soy. Um, and it's done by one company in particular, but there are many out there. Um, but one in particular that sprays something called glyphosate. And I'm not going to mention the company, I'm not going to give them that, that, uh, those props. Uh, but the reality is glyphosate, unfortunately, Health Canada has said, yes, it's safe. I don't know how they get away with this stuff. The fact is we know it is a registered, trademark, patented antibiotic. And we also know that when we eat antibiotics, when we take in antibiotics for any periods of time, it affects our internal system, especially the gut. Um, the reality is all of our conventional food, especially wheat, corn, soy, and our dairy products, which we're gonna get into, are all covered contain this very terrible toxin which is killing our gut bacteria. There's no escaping it by eating conventional food. So in the last few months especially I've created a 10-point program for my patients so that they can heal themselves. And the awesome thing is that you don't need any treatment, you don't need any pharmaceuticals, you don't need any medications to heal chronic illness, vast majority. You can maybe not cure 100% but you can reduce you can manage and you can make things and a lot of times you can actually completely yes get rid of completely cure chronic illness simply by the food that you put in your body so let's talk about a few of the things that we need to be taking out uh, so that we can heal uh, this microbiome 
You know, the, before we get started actually into that, it's, it, it really is an amazing thing, the, the, the bacteria that we live inside. I don't know if you, you're aware of the fact that uh, we know now we have about 37 trillion cells in our body. But we actually have double that amount in bacteria that live on our skin, in our mouth, in our digestive tract, um, in the in the vagina, all the different systems in the body. We actually have bacteria that enable us to metabolize things, to create certain chemical compounds, to create vitamins, minerals. Um, the functioning of it, we are actually reliant on these hundreds of trillions of bacteria. Um, and unfortunately, every single time we take in an antibiotic, we take in a food system that is containing antibiotics, um, we kill off these really helpful uh, bacteria that we need to survive. So let's get to work. First thing we got to cut out. Number one, wheat. Now wheat uh, has changed in the last 40 years. We've been monocropping, we've been genetically modifying our wheat to have higher and higher amounts of gluten content. And people we're seeing more and more people are have celiac disease or gluten intolerance. And a lot of that actually isn't the gluten. A lot of that which we think is gluten, a lot of that which we think is due to aging is actually due to toxicity because the wheat is sprayed with glyphosate and that spray is killing our digestive enzymes, our digestive bacteria that are allowing us to build the things we need to process and be healthy. So wheat has to go. And I'm not talking about gluten, I'm talking about cutting all wheat. That's all bread, all pasta, all muffins, all bagels and yes, unfortunately, all pizza all has to go. And now I'm not talking about forever, but I am talking for a short period of time. Uh, and the reality is that cutting it down doesn't help because it's a couple days from top to bottom. So if you cut it down and you're only eating it twice a week, well then you're still inflamed the whole week. So there's no point. You're not going to see the change. We got to cut it out for a good 30 days, sometimes up to 90 days. So what I look at is you start with 30 days, check in. Go to 60 days, check in. By 90 days, vast majority of chronic illness is going to be at least 90 to 100% gone. I know it sounds easy. The hard part is actually changing your food because there's so much good garbage out there. But you can actually do it just by changing your food. So number one, wheat, out. Number two, corn. Corn, same thing, sprayed with everything. And, and uh, all of our processed foods have something called high fructose corn syrup. Um, it's in everything. If it comes in a box, you got high fructose corn syrup and you got wheat. So you're going to be taking out all corn products and all corn completely. Number three is soy. One of the big things we genetically modify here, once again, that same company owned the patent rights on genetically modified corn. Unbelievable. They are literally taking over the food production industry and in the next 20 to 30 years that one company is going to have a stranglehold on production if we don't do something about it. So we got wheat, we got corn and we got soy. Uh, next we go to processed sugar. Now processed sugar definitely we know is not healthy. It doesn't exist naturally in nature and the thing is that you actually don't have to worry too much about processed sugar because once you take out wheat and once you take out corn, high fructose corn syrup, you've taken out all the processed sweets goodies that we like to eat anyway so sugar is pretty much going to be an easy one to you don't have to really think about that. Next is dairy. Now uh, and there's a lot of controversy over this because in Canada we have regulations about antibiotics and about hormone use in our cattle. The problem being is that cows are built to eat grass. But our cows don't eat grass because most of our cows are not raised in pastures. Most of our cows are raised in, in feed lots where they eat grain all day, wheat all day, corn all day. Um, this creates inflammation. They get what's called mastitis, inflammation in the breast, and then they have to be put on antibiotics. But the reality is they're eating antibiotics in the first place. So that food, that antibiotic gets into them, which gets into the milk, which gets into us. So once again, we have to avoid wheat, corn, soy, sugar, dairy. The last one obviously tied with that, red meat. And now these things are not forever, but we're looking at a very confined amount of time, one to three months, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, depending on how long you've been sick. If you've been sick for 20 years, it may take three months uh, to get rid of things. So we got our top five. Next, what are we gonna put in? So number one, all of our food that we eat organic. I know people are freaking out right now because they're saying organic is so expensive. 
go out and take a look. It's not that much different anymore. You can still go to Loblaws or No Frills and buy organic food. You can go to farmers markets and talk to your farmers. Not all uh, food that is not third party certified doesn't mean that it's not organic because a lot of time they just can't afford the third party certification. So uh, talk to the farmers. Go to farmers market. Here in Toronto, we have the Brickworks incredible farmers market there every Saturday morning. Um, but all the food you got, you want to take in for a short period of time, you want to make sure that you are not eating anything that is killing off the good bacteria. Uh, we don't want to be taking two steps forward and one step back all the time by eating conventional food while we're trying to heal. So all the food we put in is organic, bar none. Now, of the two kinds of foods we want to think about, first of all is the veggies. We want lots of dark green leafy veggies and we want lots of bright veggies. And those are the two big categories that we want to shovel in as much as we can with no limit, shovel in as much as you can into your body. And if you have to have a starch, if you're feeling like, oh, I don't know what to eat, you can do brown rice, you can do sweet potato, you can do quinoa, and you can do potato in that order. Um, once again, obviously these things are going to be all be organic. Um, the other thing that you want to put lots into because you're going to have reduced your calories quite a bit by taking out all the high processed garbage is to put in fats. Now I'm not talking about lots of skin on chicken and animal fats but I am talking about good saturated fats and mono and polyunsaturated fats from vegetable sources. So your best friend avocado, fantastic. Things like pumpkin seeds, uh, sunflower seeds, almonds, cashews, walnuts, all coconut oil, olive oil, olives, amazing sources of great fats that are uh, high in omega 3s um, that are going to help your body build every cell in your body, keep your body healthy, keep your inf inflammation levels down and allow your body to heal itself. The last thing, a probiotic. Now people, there, there's controversy over <clears throat> should we use foods that are high probiotic, things like kefir and um, uh, Greek yogurt and whatnot. Yeah, these things are great. Uh, but a lot of that stuff gets killed in your the pot of acid called your stomach uh, before it makes it to your stomach. So you can be eating all the yogurt all day, but if you're really unhealthy, if you're really sick, if you're coming from a place of real weakness, you need a little bit of a supplement. That's where a probiotic comes in handy. Um, and yes, when it comes to probiotics, there's people who say it has to be a live bacteria and it can't be dry bacteria. The thing is that, listen, every surface has bacteria on it. Your genes have bacteria on it. There's no getting away from bacteria. The fact is if you completely dry, dehydrate it out, they go dormant. As soon as they come in contact with moisture in your body, they come back. Um, you, the, the pills work and they work amazingly well. I've used them hundreds and hundreds of times with patients and every single time with a great effect. And I'm going to include a link below for a, um, um, a probiotic that I like. Uh, it has a high amount of uh, lactobacillus for your small intestine and bifidobacteria for your large intestine. Um, two of the big strains that we've done a lot of testing on that show really a high benefit when we take them in. So we got 10 different points. We take out first wheat, corn, soy, dairy, processed sugar, red meat. We eat all organic. We put in lots of green leafy vegetables, lots of bright colored vegetables. We put in lots of good fats and we take a probiotic once a day. Um, it's a big undertaking, but you have to decide where you're going to put your money. Where are you going to put your money? Are you going to put your money into pharmaceuticals, into treatment? Are you going to continue to manage your chronic illness? Not heal, not get rid of, not cure your chronic illness, but manage your proper illness. And now that company that I mentioned before that I'm not going to mention its name got bought by another company that makes the pharmaceuticals that people use to treat the illness that the company that the, the chemicals are creating. The system is rigged. The system is broken. But you can fix it by choosing different foods, by choosing to heal the microbiome. I can't stress how important this is. I can't stress how much this means to me to share this information with you because I got to tell you, we're seeing it more and more. People are not getting healthier. People are getting more and more sick and it's up to you to make better choices. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, please help me to help other people by sharing this video as much as you can. And of course, subscribe. I'm Bodhi Batista. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.